Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. This past May marked 20 years since the state of Minnesota and the tobacco companies companies reached a $6 billion settlement. At the heart of the settlement was the fact that tobacco companies were targeting youth and teenagers with their advertising. Now, some of the settlement money was used to fund public health programs and anti-smoking campaigns with an emphasis on teens and young adults. While the number of teens who smoke cigarettes has fallen, a new option has emerged, electronic cigarettes, also referred to as e-cigarettes or vaping. Are e-cigarettes a safe way to smoke? Here to discuss is Dr. Taylor Hayes, director of Mayo Clinic Nicotine Dependence Center. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Hayes. Thanks for having me. Well, Dr. Hayes, whoever invented the e-cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, <clears throat> the e-cigarette was probably invented by uh, some folks in China, uh, Ruan Company, and somewhere in the mid-2010-11 range. Um, it didn't catch on quickly, but since 2011, it definitely uh, has grown in interest and use particularly through internet sales. And I guess the thing I'd point out is that (laughs) we talk about e-cigarettes like it's one thing, and now it's not one thing any longer. What do you mean by that? There are probably 500 different devices you could purchase on the internet and about 8,000 different solutions that you can use in them. So it's uh, also gone through several generations. We used to have what we called SIGA-like e-cigarettes. You can still find them. You, they look like cigarettes, have a little LED light on the end that, that uh, looks like the, the burning end mm-hmm. of the rod. <clears throat> and um, then there were refillable versions, and now they're called mods or modifiable. They typically have tanks. They have all the elements, a, a heating element that's powered by a battery and a tank for a solution, but they are larger, that you can uh, interchange components, you can alter the voltage and amperage, uh, on the devices, so they're they not one quite, thing. Quite sophisticated. <laughs> Very sophisticated, <laughs> yes. So what's in there? So the basic device is, as I said, a, <clears throat> a power source, an energy source, a battery, typically a, a lithium-ion battery nowadays, um, a tank or some kind of uh, cartridge that holds solution, and typically the solution contains nicotine, but not always. It, mm. it take, may contain other flavorants. Uh, as well. Uh, and so when you use the device, uh, the heating element that's powered by the battery aerosolizes the solution and then you can inhale it. Hmm. So that's what the battery is for. It's, it, it's a liquid that you put in there and then the battery uh, provides the power to aerosolize the, the liquid and then right. you inhale it. Right. Electric heating element is powered by the battery and that heating aerosolizes that solution and then you inhale it. When Dr. Shives asked who came up with this, I thought the answer was tobacco companies. I thought tobacco companies invented e-cigarettes, but they definitely are on board, aren't they? Yeah. Well, in a way, they were. I mean, uh, in the the uh, tobacco company that's supported by the Chinese government, or at the time was, uh, was the developer. Uh, tobacco companies are invested in e-cigarettes, uh, but it's really still, I think, the Wild West, <laughs> because... Although the FDA has taken on regulatory authority, there really aren't very many regulations put in place for uh, what devices can come on the market and what kind of things that they can have in them or how they can be used and so forth. Are they safer than smoking? I mean, the the very simple answer is yes. Combustible tobacco is much more dangerous than e-cigarettes. So at the highest level, we'd say, yeah, fewer uh, harmful substances are in e-cigarettes. Th- we uh, think. We, 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 we believe. We and, and in fact, there are some data to suggest that although you can find some of the same substances in e-cigarette aerosol as you can find in combustible tobacco smoke, far less. Hmm. So um, they are safer in that regard. I, the, the more detailed answer to the question is, We don't know what the net public health effect is going to be as e-cigarettes continue to diffuse in the population. You commented on youth use of e-cigarettes. So good news, tobacco use is down in youth. 
Bad news, e-cigarette use is up. And I think all the data suggests that kids who use e-cigarettes are more likely to convert to combustible tobacco mm. and more likely to use combustible tobacco more heavily if they've been an e-cigarette user. So the net public health benefit is uncertain. I think that's where the arguments lie. But most of them do contain nicotine, right? I mean, the kids smoke them or anybody would smoke them because of the, of the nicotine mainly? Yes. I mean, not just because Mostly. it tastes like a strawberry or whatever. Uh, it's unclear. I mean, obviously, that's the marketing ploy, right, to, to flavor the, the solutions. Um, and just as an aside, the FDA really got on a company for marketing a solution that was marketed as juice mm -hmm. in a box that looked like apple juice box. So the, they immediately got on them for that. But um, I think the marketing to youth, the flavorants and so forth m do play a role. Most of them contain nicotine. The problem is that the labels aren't always accurate. And so we don't always know that they contain the specified amount. And sometimes things that say they contain nicotine don't. And on the other hand, some things that say they don't contain nicotine may. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's no good manufacturing process that the people are held to. You could make it in your basement if you want to and sell it on the internet. When e-cigarettes first came around, what I remember hearing about them was, oh, well, if there's no smoking, you know, in this area, you can use the e-cigarettes to make your way around that. Or you use e-cigarettes to help you quit smoking. Is there any evidence that e-cigarettes help you quit smoking? So for adults, there is some evidence, it's quite limited, that it may help uh, people quit using combustible tobacco. Um, there's some evidence that the more often you use an e-cigarette, the more likely you are to ultimately quit using combustible tobacco. Mm. On the other hand, currently, most adults who use e-cigarettes are dual users. They continue to use tobacco <laughs> uh, and smoke <laughs> e-cigarettes. So again, I, it, it, th this issue of public health benefit, unclear. If, if an individual asked me, if I completely switch from smoking cigarettes to smoking e-cigarettes only and exclusively, will it reduce the harm? Almost certainly, the answer is yes. What's the uh, attraction for a teenager? And I guess, <laughs> that, I mean, th the same question would go for tobacco. I mean, a, a lot of the kids when I, when I was a teenager smoked. I don't know exactly what the attraction was, but I guess it made it made you feel more grown up because older people smoked. But I can't quite understand the uh, and it was the nicotine after a while. Mm -hmm. But so what's the attraction for an e-cigarette? I mean, do they think it, does it look cool or? Well, I mean, and the you're fruit, a mom of a teenager. The fruit, oh, <laughs> don't get me. The <laughs> fruit flavor th that does have nicotine in it, the ones that kids are smoking. Yeah, so the solutions that are mostly marketed to students and youth are flavored. Uh, and so I think that has an attraction, uh, not just fruit flavor, but gum flavors of mm -hmm. all kinds of things. And the packaging is, packaging is attractive. Now, Dr. Shives, you're asking me to remember what it was, what I was thinking when I was a teenager. <laughs> that's that's hard. So you, what drives that? I, I think it's acceptance. We know kids who are more um, open to experience, more sensation seeking, are likely to do it. They're more likely to use if their parents use, more likely to use if their siblings use, and more likely to use if their friends and close associates use. So it's it's uh, probably a social thing as well. Teenagers, you know, uh, your kids well, you friends. We see it you, you everywhere. See, is that right? Yeah. So far, uh, when you school. say the peer group, I so far, no, I have not seen this in that peer group. But I also think it smells so bad. It's just like cigarette smoke. You cannot hide that. Mm -hmm. Can't hide that from mom really? or dad. Well, well, could moms, you? you can't hide anything from your mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've been talking about e-cigarettes with the director of the Mayo Clinic Nicotine Dependence Center, Dr. Jay Taylor Hayes. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.